It's like a sweet shop where someone smoked a cigar an hour or two before you got there. It's a, a beautiful, gentle, sweet smokiness. So Highland Park Dragon Legend, or Highland Park Dragon's Armpit as I'm choosing to call it, because I think that the whole Viking thing is really silly, is I believe it was originally going to be an exclusive to Tesco here in the UK, which is one of our major supermarkets. But I'm wondering if it didn't sell that well, because I haven't. it's been quite a few years and I haven't seen it for sale anywhere else really. And it's also quite often seen on reasonably good discount in Tesco when you do see it these days. I actually paid £28 for this one, and it might be a little bit telling as to what I think of this whiskey, that this is the second or third bottle that I've had. I have actually paid as little as £25 for one of these in the past. So let's get the bottle open and see what we've got. Just mention the cork on this bottle. It is a cork, not a screw top, but when you push it all the way in, you can actually twist it and it actually locks the cork stopper in. Completely irrelevant to the whiskey, doesn't affect the flavour at all as far as I'm aware, but I like things like that, so I just thought I'd mention that one. So Highland Park Dragon Armpit is bottled at a strength of 43.1%, so it's a whole 3.1% more than the standard 12-year-old Highland Park. And, spoiler, it makes a huge difference. So immediately that nose, it, it's so much more fuller and flavoursome, so much more juicy and intense than the nose on the 12 year old. Again, I am getting that same or similar sweet fruity peat that you get on the 12 year old. But I'm also getting a nice farminess to the peat as well. It's a real characterful peat. And I'm also getting some really nice intense sweet orangey notes some orange juice, some orange sweets perhaps, and also something like clementine juice. And if you haven't had clementine juice, it's that bit more bitter and sharp than normal orange juice, and it's a little bit more pithy as well. It's really nice. Something else that's really nice on the nose, getting lots of sweet effervescent sherbet notes, and also some licorice. And the two together really remind me, and probably a lot of people who grew up in the UK, of sherbet fountains. I'm not sure how many of you will remember those, but it's in there. Also getting some icing sugar and caramel. A slightly medicinal peppery peat, which is actually a little bit reminiscent of something from Talisker. And also lots of sweet sherry in there as well, Oloroso sherry. So let's try the palette. So that extra 3.1% has really improved the palate as well. There's a, a big hit up front of sweet oranges and caramel. More Oloroso sherry. Definitely some fresh sherry casks gone into this. And some more orange sweets. It's actually pleasantly youthful as well. And there's a, a fair deal of maltiness in there. You can really taste the barley. Some marshmallow and Terry's chocolate orange. Again, that peat. At times, there's a fleeting peppery Talisker quality to the peat and a little bit of brine in there as well really nice and the sweetness when it combines with the peat gives a lovely sweet smokiness it's almost like a sweet American barbecue sauce especially with the oranges which you do get in some barbecue sauces it works really well in a barbecue sauce and it works really well in this whiskey but there's one thing that the peat never is and that's overpowering it's a gentle subtle understated peat it's like a sweet shop where someone smoked a cigar an hour or two before you got there it's a, a beautiful gentle sweet smokiness also getting some caramelized stale smoke and some bitter oranges in there as well the peat really is multifaceted and that's one of the great things about lots of expressions of highland park i would say that the finish is medium long it's a malty finish with some oranges and some medicinal peat in there, as well as a, a pleasant astringent fruitiness. Something that often gets mentioned when 
people are reviewing Highland Park, and I think they mention it themselves on the, the back label, is Christmas cake, dried fruits. And you really do get that on the, the late palette and the finish with this one. So as for a grade, I'm going to go for a B plus on this one. So that's more than an entire grade above the 12 year old. And a lot of that is thanks to the extra bottling strength. It's a great blend of sweet pea and sweet sherry. I'd actually say that at 43.1%, this one is probably still a little bit underpowered, but it doesn't ruin things like it does for the 12 year old. And there's definitely lots on offer with the, the Highland Park Dragon Legend. Highland Park Dragon Armpit, sorry. It's probably worth saying that this is definitely not a peat monster by anyone's standards. Definitely not by Isla's standards, but I would say that it's considerably peatier than the Highland Park 12 year old. Some of that is going to be down to the high bottling strength, as I keep saying. But I think also, I would say that this is probably slightly younger on average than the 12 year old, and that helps some of the peat carry through as well. It would be really interesting, and probably really close, if it was possible to taste the Highland Park Dragon Armpit against a version of the Highland Park 12 year old bottled at 43%. But to be honest, I think this one would probably still win out. Really highly recommended. Cheers.